Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Strange Days True Crime, where we look at stories of unsolved disappearances, murders, and unidentified, in the hopes that one day they'll be solved. The Strange Unsolved Disappearance of Aiden Spear On July 5th of 2000, Aiden was born to her mother Jessica and Jessica's boyfriend, whom the two had an on and off relationship. Aiden would be Jessica's first child and only daughter, and for the first few years, it was just Jessica and Aiden. Jessica says that as a baby, Aiden was adorable and the best baby. Jessica would later meet and marry another man, and the two would have a son. Aiden loved being a big sister, and Aiden absolutely adored her little brother. Aiden's family says she is shy, kind, could be sarcastic and funny, and loves her family. Aiden spent her early years in Spokane and would later move to Tacoma, and Aiden found it hard to fit in and make new friends. Eventually Aiden did find new friends, but they were not the kind of friends you would want, and she was bullied at school. Aiden would join the swim team in high school and worked hard, but it was around this time that Jessica noticed a change in Aiden. Aiden would begin to experiment with substances and running away, and when Aiden would get drunk, her mother Jessica would get a phone call from police and hospital stating that Aiden had been beat up. Aiden's drinking and drug use would put her in bad situations and bad places. Jessica did what she could to help Aiden, but began to think that Aiden may have underlying mental health issues. At some point in Aiden's teenage years, she was raped, and Jessica felt this too led to Aiden's downward spiral. Jessica would later learn that Aiden had been hanging around another girl at the time of the rape, and was told that this particular girl was under suspicion for luring girls for her older boyfriend's friends for sex trafficking. This girl was also there when Aiden was raped. However, Aiden would not testify against her attacker. Jessica would try to get Aiden help, but in the state of Washington under medical privacy laws, children over the age of 13 do not have to share medical information with their parents. Jessica did her best to help Aiden, but during all this, Jessica still had a little boy at home to take care of. Aiden would eventually be living on the streets, but Jessica had always told her she could come home when she got clean. Jessica would still help Aiden during this time by getting her food and anything else Aiden may have needed. January of 2022, 21-year-old Aiden was finally ready to get the help she so desperately needed. Aiden had decided that she wanted her life back. So early Monday morning on January 24th, Aiden called her mother and the pair decided on a treatment facility for Aiden to go to. And Aiden made a plan to meet her mother that same day around 11 a.m. Approximately 20 minutes before Aiden was set to meet her mother Jessica, she received a message from Aiden stating that she was going to be late as she needed to say goodbye to someone. But Aiden promised to call Jessica and still to meet her to head to rehab. Jessica would begin to think that Aiden was not serious and messaged Aiden with the rehab information stating that when she was ready, she could call them. Jessica could see that Aiden had read the message, but did not respond. Aiden did not have a cell phone and would use Facebook to message people. Jessica would never hear from Aiden again. In the past, Aiden had always let her mom know she was okay, and if it had been a few weeks since they last spoke, Jessica would go looking for Aiden and eventually Aiden would be in contact with her to let her know that she was okay. It wouldn't be until February of 2022 
that Jessica would report Aiden missing, as she assumed Aiden was laying low as she thought she had disappointed her mother. And it was not uncommon for Aiden to not have contact with her mother for a few weeks at a time, but this time it was too long. Jessica would receive a message from a friend of Aiden's asking how Aiden was doing in rehab. This was strange and worrisome, as Jessica knew Aiden had never made it to rehab. The friend had stated that no one, not even Aiden's boyfriend, had seen her for about a month, as everyone believed Aiden had left for rehab. It was clear to Jessica that Aiden was missing and she began to look at those that were closest to Aiden, including Aiden's boyfriend, Andre Harris, or Dre, as it was known that he was abusive towards Aiden. Jessica was able to gain access to Aiden's Facebook page and found that Aiden was desperately trying to find her boyfriend before she had gone missing and had been messaging everyone trying to find him. Aiden then messaged, Michael Moore, and he agreed to meet with Aiden on Hosmer Street in Tacoma. This would be the last known contact Aiden had with anyone. Hosmer Street is well known for being very dangerous as there was a lot of crime and drug use and had a bad reputation. Jessica would receive a message from a woman who said that she was Aiden's street mom stating that Aiden was in Portland with a man named Patrick Detweiler. However, Jessica did not believe the woman and began to do some digging and found a man named Patrick Detweiler. Jessica would message Patrick, stating that she had been told he knew Aiden. Patrick told a story that Aiden and her boyfriend Dre had robbed him because Dre had found out that Aiden had been sleeping with Patrick and that Aiden was possibly pregnant with his baby. In this story, Patrick also said that he was in love with Aiden. However, in every conversation Jessica had with Patrick, he talked about Aiden in a past tense, which wasn't raising any red flags with Jessica. Patrick started to give Jessica information and pointing the finger at Aiden's boyfriend, Dre. Patrick had stated that when Aiden and Dre robbed him, that Dre left his keys with Patrick and another man came and took the keys. Patrick's story didn't seem to sit right with Jessica, and when she told Patrick she wanted proof that Aiden and him had spoke, he ended contact with Jessica. Jessica would take the information from Patrick and relay it to the detectives working on Aiden's case. During the time of Aiden's disappearance, some had stated that Patrick was living in an old camper near an old airport and that he was the last person to have seen Aiden. Patrick also sold drugs and had previously sold them to Aiden. Patrick later claimed he knew where they could find Aiden's body and he informed detectives of this too which they conducted a search of the area near the old airport using cadaver dogs, but nothing was found during the search. Court records were pulled on Patrick, showing violent and delusional behaviors. During the time that Aiden had disappeared, Patrick had been speaking with another woman, and Jessica reached out to her asking about the messages between the woman and Patrick during the time that Aiden was last seen. The woman had stated that Patrick had messaged her on January 24th, stating things weren't going well and he had to leave Washington. The woman would message Patrick four days later and he had told her he was already gone. It was a tip that had been called in about Aiden's body being at the old airport and when investigators reached out to Patrick, he refused to talk with them. Patrick had stated that he left Washington because someone was going to go missing and he would be framed for it. Jessica would receive a message on Aiden's messenger from another woman stating that she shouldn't have left her at Patrick's that day 
and to save a spot for her up there, which to Jessica sounded as though someone knew something about Aiden's disappearance. Aiden's mom would reach out to the woman asking if she could ask her a few questions. A few days after, the woman would respond to Jessica with a story that her and Aiden, Patrick and Dre were at Patrick's trailer. The woman said that Aiden wanted to leave and Patrick became aggressive. The woman said that they took Aiden towards Spokane with Dre's aunt and when they returned that Aiden was no longer with them. While digging through Aiden's social media, it became more clear that Aiden was involved in sex work and was selling herself for drugs or to get money for them. Jessica doesn't feel that investigators have been overly helpful with Aiden's case and even slow at times when it comes to getting things done. But due to the lack of physical evidence, police are finding it hard and people don't want to come forward with information. There are many rumors going around about what may have happened to Aiden, including that she was being sex trafficked with the cartel and they had killed her when they were done with her. Another is that Aiden's boyfriend Dre and Michael Moore placed Aiden in the trunk of Dre's black BMW sedan and then disposed of her. Afterwards, they left the key in the car so it could be stolen. The car was actually discovered in an impound lot by a detective, but he didn't feel the need to search the car, stating he would need a warrant and it would be hard to get one. Even though Aiden lived a high-risk lifestyle, she was still and is still very much loved and missed by her family and friends. Aiden's family has set up a Facebook page called Help Us Bring Aiden Spear Home in the hopes of finding Aiden. Aiden Spear was 21 years old at the time of her disappearance and was last seen and heard from on January 24th of 2022 in Tacoma, Washington. Aiden is Native American, standing 5 foot 6 inches, weighing around 115 to 120 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information on Aiden's case, please contact the Pierce County Sheriff's Office at 253-798-798. 7530 or Crime Stoppers at 1 800 222 TIPS. You can also submit an anonymous tip on the Season of Justice website. Please share and help bring Aiden home. Well, that's it for this case. Please like and subscribe for more stories of these strange days we live in.